Hey y'all, welcome back to Harmon Homestead, okay? Today we're gonna have a chicken scratch talk time on chickens and we're gonna talk it out. This is a beginner crash course on raising baby chicks, okay? I've done a video on chick care. That was one of my very first videos. We've been asked some questions and I think we need to start back from square one to the basics and answer these, okay? The number one thing is, <laughs> do you need a rooster to get an egg? No, you <laughs> do not, okay? The hen will lay regardless. The hen will lay you an egg when it's time for her to start laying, whether a rooster is in the mix or not, okay? She does not need a rooster to lay an egg. That is nature, okay? She's gonna lay that egg. That's her job. Now, so when you go to buy baby chicks, they, they will be something called straight run. You can buy them male or female already, okay? Or you can buy straight run. Straight run means that they're all jumbled up together. You may buy 10 chicks from a company that's straight run and you may end up with eight roosters out of 10, okay? They're all jumbled up, it doesn't matter. Or you may end up with no roosters. You don't know. They're all just put together in a pile and shipped off. Same thing at a store, wherever. It's usually tr cheaper to buy straight run. If you buy them where they're already branched off into male and female, just say you wanna go get four little female baby chicks there's still a chance that there could be a rooster in the mix. Trust me, last year we got um, Silver Lace Wine Dots. We paid for eight pullets and they were all pullets except one. We had a rooster in the mix. So just be careful with that, okay? Um, when you get started, you, you need to know why you're buying chickens. You need to look at all the breeds of chickens. Do you want Chickens for looks. Do you want them for the look of the egg? They can lay all different colored eggs. There's things called olive eggers where they lay an olive green egg. There's blue egg layers and all different kind of things. Brown egg layers, white egg layers. You need to decide what you want and why you're getting into this. Do you want birds for meat production? Do you want birds that are dual purpose, meaning that they're great egg layers, but they're also good for meat? The bigger chicken breed you buy, um, these big, gigantic, like, uh, Brahmas and wine dots. We have wine dots. They eat more feed because they're bigger chickens. Usually, it seems like our wine dots take longer to start laying. So, if you're wanting something to start real quick, you may not want that. You really need to do your research, guys, before you get into this. Um, we love wine dots. That's our favorite. Um, they're just hardy, tough birds. They were, um, I believe, from the northern U.S., so they are bred for cold weather. They're thick, thick they're fat, they're fluffy. Uh, they're a dual purpose, meaning for meat and eggs. Um, they do good on the egg laying. Now, our best egg layer is a leghorn. She lays every other day, half the time every day, the biggest white egg you've ever seen, and she's dependable. She's small. She doesn't take a lot of feed. Um, you know, it's just what you're after, okay? When you go get your chicks, you need to have them a shelter, okay? Usually, especially this time of the year where it's still cool or cold over most of the U.S. We just had snow in Alabama yesterday. You will need to more than likely keep them inside. If they are day-old baby chicks, they're going to have to stay in for a week or two unless you have got one surefire set up outside that is sheltered like in a garage or a shop or something where it's enclosed and they can get that heat. We keep ours inside for two weeks under a brooder plate. We love the plates. They are a lifesaver. They're um, safer, okay? You don't have to have that heat lamp going in your house. They don't stink as bad. Um, you can adjust the plates to their height. They love to snuggle up under it, and it's just been a lifesaver. The only problem is they jump on top of the plate, and they poop everywhere they go. So you have to deal with the poop on top of the plate, and by the end of two weeks, you we scrape it with a paint scraper. It's every day, and it's that's rough. But otherwise, you have to have some kind of heat, and they, the brooder plates are great. Now, once they move outside, for us, for four more weeks at least, they stay under a heat lamp. Um, what I mean by outside is they go to a garage, okay, a shop. 
So they're still enclosed. They're not out in the open air, but they're not inside the house, okay? We use the plastic bins and um, we use the top with holes put in it, big, huge holes with chicken wire zip tied on top where they can get plenty of airflow indoors. Um, we use a water. For the first few days, you need um, marbles or gravel in the bottom of your water so they will not drown when they get a drink. And they're so easy to fall asleep and their head will tilt over. You don't want them to go down into the water. The marble will stop their little beak and they'll raise back up. You also need chick starter. Either it can be medicated or unmedicated. We do not give our chicks medicated chick starter. I just don't care for it, never have, and I, you know, it's nothing against it. I just don't do it, okay? For at least, at least six weeks, I believe until the temp is 75 or 70, uh, they must be under heat. Well, that's tough even with nighttime temps. Or the catch is until they're fully feathered, all their little fuzz comes off and then they grow in their real feathers. They look, they look adorable the first week and then they start looking really ugly. <laughs> and then they're gonna look horrible as little teenagers and then they look like chickens, okay? Um, in the bottom of your tote or whatever you call it, plastic bin, you need some kind of uh, shavings or something. We use uh, shavings in the bottom, something to absorb because everywhere they go, they poop. They make a mess in their water. It, it's just, you need something to, and we change that at least for the first week. It's going to be every two to three days. First, about three days you can rock on. And then after that, it's going to be every day, just about or every other day. Okay. Um, outside in the garage, we've got our brooders is the term for it and it's um you go back and watch our video my husband built one it has uh the let me see here i think i wrote it down what it was it's some kind of i think quarter inch hardware cloth it's it's like chicken wire okay and they walk on that and they they poop and it goes through that into little trays we've got so it doesn't build up in there. You got to think about that wherever you put these chickens, okay? Um, I would advise everybody to get a rooster. If you can have a rooster, I would get one because he protects your flock, okay? Um, there's been instances where roosters will will take down predators, a small predator. They are great. They alert their hens, they protect their hens. I just, and I, I love to hear rooster crow, okay? Um, so really think about the chickens think about the top the shelter and the heat okay if you um use the shavings you need um pine okay pine shavings pine shavings the cedar is not good for them um uh, let me see here i wrote down some notes half inch hardware cloth that's what i wrote down that's what's in our breeder box by week six, again, if they are fully feathered and the temps are up, you can move them outdoors. You'll know if they're too cold or not. They'll huddle really bad. Um, even in the sunshine, they won't be walking around. You'll know like, hey, I need to put these back back into their heat. Um, you can not integrate with fully grown chickens, okay? You cannot take your um, parcel of chicks and throw these outside in the pen with your existing flock if you already have some. That is a huge no, no. It's hard enough to get two adult chickens to get in the same pen together if they've not been raised together. That is horrible, guys. You do not put baby chicks there. You have to have them grown at least four months, okay? Four months, they can probably fend themselves. So, it's a task. You're So, if you have a coop and you have no chickens in it, then you're fine. You're set. If you do not, then you're gonna have to have a whole nother space to put these baby chicks in, these little teenager chicks, until it's time to put them in there between four to six months, okay? Um, when you get your eggs, you need to check your eggs every day. There's a huge debate on, do you wash your eggs, do you not wash your eggs? A lot of people cannot believe that people wash eggs and a lot of people cannot believe that people don't wash eggs, okay? If they're dirty or if it's raining, I wash them. They must go straight into the fridge because when you hand wash an egg, you wash the bloom off of it. There's a protective coating on the outside that protects the, the yolk and in the inside of the egg. 
when that is washed off, bacteria can enter, okay, into inside. So don't wash that off and then leave it on the counter, okay? Now, if my eggs are fresh, I, you can leave them on the counter to me. To me, I leave mine on the counter a couple of weeks. You do what you think's best. Research it, okay? How will I know if my eggs are fertile? Well, first of all, you must have a rooster in the pen, okay? You must have a good ratio. If you have 20 hens in the pen you and one rooster, all your eggs may not be fertile. It depends on the weather. It depends on the rooster, the rooster's age. By the time he starts crowing, which can be anywhere from... Gosh, we've seen them at three months try to crow. And we've seen them on past 10 months just starting to crow. Which He's a late bloomer, <laughs> the one we've got doing that. But um, you'll, you'll notice if that hen should be fertile, okay? <laughs> if um, you're not sure, when you crack your eggs, you, you'll notice a little white dot on the top of the yolk. That means it's fertile. The second best way to me is put it in the incubator. Day three, you'll know. You'll see little spider veins. You'll see a little bit of spider veins and you'll know if it's fertile. And if you're not sure at that day, just let it rock on in the incubator. You will see a heartbeat, okay? You will know if they are fertile or not. You also want to think about this. When you get chickens, is that something you might want to incubate and breed? Is that a durable chicken if something happens? If, if something happens right now, do I want to go out and get a chicken that is not good for meat um, or not known for meat, real skinny, sc scrawny, it, it is not good for egg laying is, and is just very ornamental? Would I want that? No. You need to make sure that you do get some just durable chickens and then you might want to go into the other areas. I say get something basic that looks normal as your first chickens. Learn about chickens and then branch off. Like we um, had some little Polish chickens last year or two years ago. I didn't know anything about them. I had no clue. I was trying to learn about silkies and Polish and wine dots and Americanas and everything all at once. And each breed is a little bit different. They, their crows even sound different as far as roosters. They're different. So they're all kind of the same, but they're all kind of different. So I would get something, just a basic barnyard chicken that's durable and dual purpose. Then I would start, you know, get that down pat, see how it goes, and then go on to the others. I know you may just want like um, a frizzled something right off the bat, but that may not be what you need, okay? You, you need to start out with something very basic. I mean, yeah, there's frizzle chickens. Their, their feathers curl out and they're... Um, now, we've got a frazzle rooster. He's frazzled and that's a no-no. When you get a frizzle, if you ever do, okay, you cannot breed frizzle to frizzle. If you do, you get a frazzle. Everything he hatches will be frizzled. Everything, and then you get into this problem where frizzle has to go with a smooth feather and all this other stuff. Guys, it is so complex. And when you get into the world of silkies and trying to breed colors and certain feather patterns and all that and shades of color feathers and guys, this gets like serious, okay? So I would get me some barnyard chickens, a good dual purpose breed and go from there, okay? Um, if you get a rooster, this is another benefit. And I'm kind of all over the road here. I'm just trying to think of everything. And I've got notes wrote down. And I didn't even read my notes. I just started talking. If you get a rooster, you can have your own chicks. Okay? You don't have to go to the store and buy anymore. You don't have to go order anymore, you know, at that point in time. Now, at some point, you will need to integrate different roosters into your flock. But let me tell you something. If you get just a regular rooster, you can find another regular rooster. People want to rehome roosters all the time. Um, when they hatch chicks, because they end up not knowing if they're male or female, and then they end up with so many, they don't know what to do. So we've been in that position ourselves. So you can have your in, an endless supply of chicks if you get an incubator, okay? I suggest that everybody does, that way they can, again, that's becoming self-sustainable. You can have your own chickens. Now, you may want to go out and get every breed on demand, and that's fine. But if you get a rooster, you can have your own chickens of that breed. It's, it's 
it's really the most sustainable thing, guys. Okay, I would get a rooster. I love the roosters. I like the roosters better than the hens. I think they're beautiful, they're prettier, they sound better, and they're such protectors. I mean, they're great. Um, You get less eggs in the winter. Every chicken goes through something called a molt. You will think your chicken has the mange. Its feathers will fall out. They'll start losing weight. That's a good time to worm your chickens, to deworm them, give them some wormer, um, because they're going to quit laying eggs, okay? Their egg production slacks off. Nothing's wrong with your chickens. It's their little reset period. It's just not the right time of the year. The daylight's less, blah, blah, blah. Now, this time of the year, just daylight savings. Last night, time uh, went forward. There's more daylight in the day. They're, the temps are generally warmer. They're getting warmer. It gets everything cranked up and gets those chickens back to going, okay? A good way to ensure you get eggs all year long is to hatch early in the year, but this is dangerous, guys, okay? Start hatching in February. If you hatch in February, you should be good. February all the way up until May, your pullets, your hens, will start laying in the fall and winter, and they'll keep laying. A lot of their first eggs will be in the winter, and so you're good. We've always had eggs when everyone else said, I don't have any eggs. My hens have quit laying, they're molting. Ours is not, because ours have just become grown. It's tough though, this time of the year. It's tough trying to deal with baby chicks, but we've timed it just right where um, we've got a set right now that's five weeks old. They will be six weeks next weekend. That is so close to temps being just right here. Um, maybe a little bit too early, but we can keep them where they are right now, okay? Um, sheltered and under four walls and a roof and heat source until they are ready to go outside. That That's the best way that I can tell you to get eggs all year long is, is again, to hatch your own chickens. I would get an incubator and a rooster, okay? Feed. They need chick starter until, they say point of lay, six months. About five months, four to five months, we start throwing in scratch feed. That's just chicken feed, okay? Um, that's your corn, your millet, all of that. You can get that at your local feed store. You can get that at a grocery store. If it's a big box store, um, you can get it, okay? This year, we are grow going to grow dent corn, just plain corn, like you see in chicken feed, animal feed. We are going to try to help feed our chickens by growing that. Again, become self-sustainable. Feed every scrap you have to those chickens. It will decrease your feed bill. All those people go out and buy calcium for their chickens. That drives me bonkers. If they have, people, they look up and they see that if they have a weak eggshell, like where it cracks real easy. Now, I can tell you, some, some hens are just gonna be that way. We've got one silver lace wine dot we give her everything in the book to correct that, and it's still, her little egg is just more thin than others. If you just touch it on the counter edge, it'll crack. If you have a weak shell, that means usually there's a low calcium level because the shell's just calcium, okay? People go out and buy this. Crack your eggs, use your eggs, get an old coffee cup. Once you're done with it, a, a big a bin of coffee, we have the plastic coffee containers and throw it in there. Throw your eggshell in there, save them, throw them out to the chickens, Th feed them back to the eggshells. A lot of people bake those and dry them. Um, I just do mine that way. I've not had any problems since. That's probably not the best way to do it, but that's the best that I am doing right now, okay? Give them back their own eggshells. You can cook these. You can even cook their own eggs. If you get in a real bad bind, with feeding your chickens and just say you didn't get a paycheck this week or you didn't get so you couldn't make ends meet and you have nothing to feed your chickens, hey, scramble their eggs up and feed them back to them. It is nothing but protein and nutrients and they will do a-okay. Now, also free ranging them. Let those chickens go. You need to get them used to that. But after about a good week of being let out and put back every night, they all know. They know where they roost. They'll go back. Again, you have to watch predators and all that. I've done several videos on the benefits of free-ranging chickens, and I think you really, really need to consider it because our egg production has went up. The chickens are healthier. They've gained weight. Um, they walk around all day, and they eat. They eat bugs. They eat 
grass. And I'm gonna tell you the best time to let these chickens out is when it rains. Well, after, after a fresh rain. I looked the other morning and it had stormed all night long. We had earthworms just coming up through the grass everywhere, slugs or whatever. Those chickens tore it up. They go through inch by inch of your whole yard looking for bugs and protein and grass. And they love it. That's That will help your feed bill. Um, that's really what I've got, guys. If you, um, we turn them loose during the day, we put them up at night, and there's really nothing to it if you can get your chicks raised up. Now, if you have, um, not the desire to want to grow, start raising chicks, go get a whole flock, get a flock, get some laying hens, get a rooster. I would recommend like five hens to one rooster at minimum. That's a, that's a good number, maybe six. And I would start from adult and go from there and see how the grown chickens do and then hatch your own baby chicks. That's what we did. And that's how we started. And I think that, that was easier because I got used to just what a chicken was. And I knew what to look for by the time the babies were coming up compared to the adults. And you'll know if one's sickly or not or how it's supposed to look. You'll know and you'll get it and it'll all come together. But to sum it all up, no, you do not need a rooster to get an egg. Become self-sustainable. Keep going. I know it's hard. Right now it is harder than it has been in a long time for us homesteaders. Keep the faith and keep knowing why you're doing what you're doing. You started it out for a purpose. Keep that purpose up. We'll see you next time. Keep encouraged on Harmon Homestead.